Hello, I'm Mr. Gregory. I'm a chemistry and biology teacher here at Folsom High School. So I'm remaking my back to school night video because I found out, um, thankfully through some parents, that there was no audio on my video. So I've come here to school early this morning to remake my video and I will repost it on Google Classroom and it will be emailed out to all the parents. I first want to introduce myself and give you a little background about where I come from and um, how I became a teacher. So first of all, when I moved to California permanently in 2008, I, work, I, was, I was still working in healthcare. And so then I decided to go to Sac State where I got my bachelor's of science in biology with my concentration in microbiology, which is studying of bacteria and viruses. And I received a minor in chemistry. I used this degree um, to obtain a job in a, a microbiology lab where it was very fulfilling, where I um, primarily worked on zoo and sanctuary animals to find out um, what, what uh, uh, microorganism was um, infecting them, making them sick, and then working with the vets to find the best treatment for the animal. After working in that lab for several years, I decided to go to USC, where I received my Master's of Arts in Teaching. I graduated from USC in 2018 and have been working um, as a teacher, this is my fourth year. So my teaching style is classified as inquiry-based teaching. So a lot of people may not know what that means or they have a mis uh, misconception about inquiry-based teaching. So I do have a video I want to show to you that hopefully explains what an inquiry-based teacher um, is all about. one of the key differences that make an inquiry teacher what they are is their um, the way of seeing the student actually that they see the student first and foremost as a competent capable curious um, almost partner in in learning so they and they see the light in each child they find it they find what it is that makes that student intrigued and interested and there's always something in everyone inquiry teachers ask more than they tell it they they do tell but their dominant way of working with students is through questions and through the right kinds of questions so they know how to scaffold there's a kind of image of of the inquiry teacher as this kind of laissez-faire um, uh, hands-off teacher that simply lets the kids do what they want. Um, that's been a very persistent image um, and it comes from some poor iterations of inquiry. But in fact the opposite is true of the best inquiry teachers I know. They are teachers that know how to sit with the student, to carefully scaffold. They know their curriculum so well that they can um, move with the students interests in order to come to that curriculum. They have a very um, uh, strong repertoire of strategies and approaches. I mean in some ways when you think about teachers that might uh, rely on a textbook to do the work for them or that, and I still see it, that simply give kids worksheets to fill in. Surely that is abdicating responsibility. Um, maybe it would be even be better for those kids if they were able to just go in to find out what they wanted to find out. I think what inquiry teachers do differently is that they, they're prepared to share the journey with their students. They're prepared to say the important words, I don't know, I wonder how we might find out. They are not simply a kind of passive guide on the side, as they're often described. They're very much in the centre. They're alongside the student. They are highly sophisticated practitioners. They know where it is. They're wanting to take their students at a big picture level, but they work often with the interests, the questions that the student brings to the learning in order to take them further. 
they listen, they observe, and they respond to what students reveal to them. They're also teachers that are great designers, so they bring a kind of design thinking disposition to their work. So I hope that video maybe uh, gave you uh, a new thought on inquiry-based teachers or maybe clarified some misconceptions that people may have about inquiry-based teachers. On this slide, I've posted all of my contact information. If at any time you need to get a hold of me by phone, you can call the main number, 916-294-2400, and my extension is 415307. Also, here is my school email address that you can email me at any time with any questions, comments, or concerns. I do a lot in Google Classroom, not so much assignments, but if I am teaching in the class, whether it's PowerPoints or a video or a worksheet, all of those are always posted on Google Classroom so the students are able to go back over them if they want, if they want to look at this, the worksheet again. Um, and so these are our Google Classroom codes. I invite you, if you want to, you can join our Google Classroom so that you can see what the material is directly and what the assignments are and any, uh, any uh, announcements that I may post on Google Classroom for the students. So maybe there's times that you talk to your um, child about uh, how, how class is going and what's it about. I do do direct instruction teaching on the material, but I don't ever um, desire to overload the students with lecture and taking notes. I try very hard to schedule that we would never take notes back to back on a, you know, two days in a row. Sometimes it does happen because of scheduling, but um, I like to break everything up where it's a lecture and we learn about a topic or a concept, then we will all work together on a worksheet um, or some other activity, and then we will do an experiment about that concept. Um, and then that's, that's basically how I like to run um, week after week. Assignments and assessments, I am not a pro advocate for homework. Um, maybe some of you have talked to your child and have said, hey, you know, where's your homework for chemistry or where's your homework for biology? Um, I do assign worksheets and activities that I like for us to do in class. I like for us to all work together. I like to see partners working together and I go and I check in with the groups to see how they're doing. But I prefer to do all the work in class so that if there is a question about a biological concept or a chemistry calculation that the students are, the students have me here to ask. And so that's why um, we do a lot of work in the class. It's all built into my, um, to my scheduling. Many, many, many of our experiments, obviously they are hands-on. A lot of our activities are hands-on. Right now, we're just wrapping up with the idea of learning about um, scientific equipment and how to handle them and which one's best for this. Um, but a lot of every week we will do something hands-on. That's what I want to do. Every week um, we have an experiment and every week we have a hands-on activity. And the experiments that I bring into the classroom, I do not like cookie cutter um, experiments, uh, whether it's chemistry or biology, the same experiments that have been done for eons and eons. So I like to design my own experiments. I like to collaborate with other um, teachers that I went to school with um, that teach all over the world to see what they're bringing in. And I use my networking from um, working in laboratories and um, also teaching at Sac State and Sacramento City College for a time um, to bring in equipment, to bring in um, ideas and to, to expose the students to real world phenomenon. This is really happening in laboratories today. These are the real experiments that scientists are doing today. You are doing the same experiment that a scientist is doing out in the world today. And exams and quizzes. Exams and quizzes make up 50%, 5-0 of the student's grade. Um, that, is our real, um, that is our real summative assessment so that I know that they have mastered the schedule or schedule, master the, uh, the material. I, I, I always prepare all of the students for the exams and the quizzes, 
We go over it in class. We work together on assignments. We do math calculations. We uh, work on microscopes. We uh, work on um, key terms and academic language. So I do feel that um, going up to an exam that the students are prepared. And if at any time a student does not do as well, if they do not think that they are prepared enough, all they need to do is talk to me. I try to run a very safe and very stress-free classroom. And so I don't ever want the anxiety levels of my students to go through the roof because they are stressed over a quiz or an exam. Everything is always fixable. So I hope that gives you some insight on what type of teacher I am. Please feel free to call me or email me at any time. And um, I look forward to an excellent school year.